What's up YouTube? Good afternoon here from Beaver County, Pennsylvania. It is bitter cold here in Pennsylvania in the Keystone State. I think today when I woke up it was 7 degrees outside and now I think it's only like 12 and it's going down to minus something tonight in Pittsburgh here so uh, wherever you're at in the world I hope you're staying warm especially if you're here. So you're probably wondering why I am filming this building. Well it's because of you guys. I get a lot of questions since I've been doing a lot of uh, vlogging here in the Beaver Cemetery and I get a lot of questions about this building. Is it a chapel? Is it a mausoleum? Is it uh, just a place to uh, worship? Or, well, it's a combination of all those things, but we're gonna get into that. So for right now, we're gonna take a little virtual tour of this. And there is a plaque that's on the wall of, these, of this building here. And uh, you're not gonna be able to see it. And I don't have zoom lens, but I'm gonna read it to you. I think I did take a picture of this, but Beaver Cemetery incorporated June 10th, AD 1865. First board of managers was John Murray, president, Milson D. Dara, Thomas J. Davidson, Samuel P. French, Samuel B. Wilson, George W. Hamilton, Henry Heiss. That's the best my eyes can do. Chapel and receiving vault erected AD 1909. So the building is rather old. The cemetery was first laid here in 1865. A lot of the Civil War persons buried in this cemetery who died before 1865 were buried over there in Clark Park. Their remains were transferred to here. So if you see a grave in here, it says 1863. Well, that's that was why. But I don't think, I don't know if I've seen, well, I may have, I don't know. But let's just take a little tour of this. And I get asked this a lot, you know, what is this big building? What purpose did it serve? Well, I'll tell you one, a lot of you are right. This did serve as a chapel. And when folks would die and come here to be buried in the Beaver Cemetery, and if the weather was really bad, they would come into this chapel here, open these doors, and they would have a service inside for the deceased. And then afterwards, like anywhere else, the body would be taken out and reposed to whatever location the family decided upon. But that's not the whole story. So it was also a church for some people. They used to come in here, I think, Sometimes, like during the day, the doors would be open and you could come here and say prayers for the dead and whatnot. This building no longer serves any of those purposes. It's permanently closed. It's just a part of the cemetery history. But there is an interesting tale, and it's rather morbid. And the only reason why I note about it is because one particular day when I was here doing all my research, gathering notes, documenting graves, making vlogs for you guys, taking photographs, doing all those things that I do, that I've done so far, thus far with this cemetery, I stumbled upon, accidentally, an employee of the cemetery, and he was walking somewhere over here. They were bearing a body across over yonder there by Old Westinghouse, and he come up towards me, and I flagged him down, because I something told me to you know, speak to him, and I didn't. I said, sir, are you wouldn't mind me asking. I said, are you happen to be an employee here? Or are you just a funeral director? He said, no, I'm, I'm, I work in the office over, and the office is over there. And I proceeded to ask him about this building, and he laughed, and he said, yeah, we got a lot of questions about this building. And he proceeded to tell me the interesting history behind this. And again, not only did this building serve as a place of worship sometimes, and it was a place where they would hold services for the deceased, it served another purpose. Now, if you paid attention to the plaque that I just read to you, you will notice that it said it was completed in AD 1909. Well, in 1909 and prior to that, they didn't have very good digging utensils. All they had was axes, picks, and shovels, right? So in a very cold day like this, if a person died and wanted to be buried here in the Beaver Cemetery, well, they had a little problem. Couldn't dig the graves. The ground's too frozen. They didn't have bulldozers. So what did they do? Well, inside this building, there's a door that goes off to the left and it goes downstairs. And this part here, this ugly, dark part, is the basement to this building. Okay? So, when you died, your body would be stored down here in this basement. And you had to wait to be buried until the ground thawed out in the spring. Then they would come down here, take your body out of the basement, in the casket, and then bury you when they were able to redig the earth. <laughs> it's morbid, but that's the way they did things back then. 
There was no way that they could put you in frozen ground. They didn't have the equipment to do it. Not for a grave. So you would stay down here in the cold. And there was no heat down here. But can you imagine just for a moment in the springtime, even in closed caskets, because caskets weren't very good back then, and you would come down here in the basement to retrieve a body for burial, how bad it must have stunk? Let that sink in. Lord knows how many bodies were laid down there until this frozen earth would be capable of being dug up to repose a body. How many of you knew that? So that was one of the primary purposes that this building certainly served. It was a storehouse for bodies. I don't think that they stored any on the top, obviously, because they would have services here. But down here, it got quite full, he told me. And when it got real full, they had to transfer, they had to transfer bodies to somewhere else. They didn't have the capacity to fill, you know, every single body that was going to be buried in the Beaver Cemetery during the wintertime and having to wait till spring to accomplish that task. So this building has a very weird history. Can't imagine how many bodies were down there and how many ghosts <laughs> were lurking in that basement down there. If I ever get the chance, I'm gonna go down there and I'm gonna try and film it. I'm gonna ask for permission and let's see if we can get something done about that. That would be a wonderful addition to my research here. We've got names on the walls here. Don't know if they can, the camera's going to pick them up, but so. Oh, and just so you know, um, I'm filming this video in 1080p at 120 FPS per second because if I try to go to 2K or 4K with it being so cold out here, my battery just doesn't last. It doesn't have enough charge. The, the cold just zaps. The more you film in higher resolution, the more it eats up the energy of your battery. So. This is only going to be in 1080p, so I do apologize in advance, but it is what it is. So let's end this video since we're so close. I want to show you a very interesting grave here, and I've talked about this man before. He's one of the early senators of Pennsylvania, especially here in Beaver County, Mr. Stanley Quay, Matthew Stanley Quay, right here, a Civil War veteran. Mr. Quay was involved in the Battle of Fredericksburg, and he received the Medal of Honor for his bravery. He was discharged from the Union Army and became a senator in Pennsylvania for the Republican Party. He was born in September 30, 1833. He died on May 28, 1904. He was good friends with Abraham Lincoln. He was a classicist by nature, which just makes me want, uh, a very big fan of his because I'm a classicist too. He loved ancient literature, Greek literature, Roman literature like I do. Uh, he was so fluent in Latin that he used to write letters to his colleagues in Latin. So that goes to show you the kind of education this man had, especially in his time period. His wife is next to him, Agnes Barkley Clay. They have the Latin spelling, Q-V-A-Y. <laughs> I don't know what year she was. Let me see. Does it say it on this side? Okay, October 14th, 1831, born and died January the 10th, 1911. I'm just showing you these because we're right here. So this is Mr. Quay's father. He was a preacher, Reverend A.B. Quay, born 1802, died 1858, I think. His mother was born 1799, which is the year George Washington died. And she died on March 25th, 1868, I think. Let's see if you guys can see that better than I can. I got bad eyeballs, so. So again, another interesting piece of history. The Quays were well-renowned. Mr. Quay's house is preserved as an historical landmark on College Avenue in Beaver over there, right up from the library. It's a big uh, dark gray house, and it has an historical plaque in front of it for those of you who wish to visit it and wish to obtain more information, you can go down there. Some business has bought it now, but you can go down there and read the sign. When my website comes back up and running, on, maybe I'll post an article about it and you can read it. And then let's end our little adventure right here before this camera dies on me because I have a feeling it's going to here. This is the grave of, Mr. of the world-renowned, famous, well, at least in Beaver County, Richard P. Roberts, commander of the 140th Pennsylvania Regiment, died at the Battle of Gettysburg. And I need to bring this to the cemetery's attention. Something needs to be done with some preservation here because it's getting more difficult to read his grave.
somebody was nice enough to put a nice big bow here, blue and a gray, and blue and silver, but still, it's a nice gesture. Legend has it that inside this case here, this big pillar, is his original sword that he had as an officer. But it's very difficult to read. Yeah, I can't even barely see it myself. There's a lot of cracks and whatnot in here. Wow, I just wonder if we can, if I can get a hold of somebody, I just just go to the office and register a concern over it, that something needs to be done with it. Wonder if there's a, 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 some kind of a procedure in uh, rekindling this and preserving it. Again, ladies and gentlemen, our history is so important. I don't care where you live and where you're watching this video in the continental United States or the world over. No matter where you live and what town, your town has a history, your town has a story. And I'm telling these stories and I'm preserving them. And uh, I hope you enjoy this. I hope you really uh, do your re more research on your own volition to get you motivated, you know. And to do this, this, we have so much history here, guys. So I hope you enjoy it. I'm getting cold now. I have to go home. So I'm going to end the video here. And uh, I will see you in the next one. And uh, yeah, so let me know. Like, comment, subscribe. What do you think of this now that you know the history of this big building here? Next time you walk into Beaver Cemetery, those are the purposes that it served. So I hope I answered that question. Like, subscribe. Let me know what's going on. Stay warm, guys. All right, see you in the next one.